Hello everybody. Hello YouTube. Hello art history enthusiasts and visual culture aficionados. It's me again, Miss M. And if I sound tired, it's because I am. <laughs> um, I wanted to come over and do a little bit of uh, just tying up loose ends with regard to like a lot of the stuff I've been working on lately and maybe make a couple of announcements. I want to just address a couple of things. Nothing major, nothing like crazy. Just like I said, tie a couple of loose ends up from my recent videos that I've been working on and recent ideas that I've been working on. Um, if you're waiting for the Twin Peaks reviews, reactions, analysis videos, they are coming, I promise. Same thing with FMJ. Um, and my next six no, my next installment of Understanding the Shining, uh, part, which one is it? Part, where, what's the last one I did? Hold on. Oh. Jesus, why am I making this video? I thought I could do it. I really did. Um, but... <laughs> I, I, oh, it's part 16. Here we go. Okay, so sep uh, part 17 is on the way, along with those other videos. And I want to start um, kind of basically like a podcast where I do like an artist. just 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 a really quick profile and analysis of artists, whether it's painters, sculptors, photographers, filmmakers, um, and, and that kind of thing. So I, you know, that I'll be working on that. I'll be working on that soon. Um, I kind of want to branch out. I, I still really enjoy making these videos, but I want to sort of explore everything else that I've got uh, available here to do. And again, I want to work on this channel, get things like a little bit tidier than they are, get stuff into playlists. I've already kind of made my understanding, um, the Shining series a podcast. You can just make any playlist, uh, a podcast. If, if you didn't know that, now you do. Um, so if you want to try it, go ahead. Uh, let me get my, um, images, uh, you know, to together and then, then I'll, then I'll come back just a second. Okay. I'm back. Um, so I just kind of explained to you what I'm working on, what's going to be coming up in the future, hopefully the near future. And, um, I, I want to read the red room to you as a story. So I found it. I found it on, um, where the hell is it? Oh, there it is. Uh, on Gutenberg. Uh, dot org. Okay. So the red room by HG Wells, it's not terribly, terribly long. So that's why I, I feel like I can tackle this story. Um, and probably a pretty short video too. So that's coming up. Um, also I found this song that I adore by Susie and the Banshees, Arabian Nights. And I put these hashtags here, Twin Peaks, David Lynch, Laura Palmer, Ancient Cooper. This song reminds me of Twin Peaks so much. Um, please check it out if you want to go ahead look up the lyrics it's a kind of a haunting beautiful song um and you know we can talk about it in the comments if you want to and also by the way i'm on reddit now so come check me out uh it's just the object of art all one word if you want to find me and uh, follow me and interact with me there and I th that would be awesome if we could like start kind of a thing where we could all communicate and bounce ideas off of each other in the reddit I don't know how to do that yet but I I can learn <laughs> I can learn uh so we we'll see um red room by hg wells I'm gonna read that and <clears throat> I wanted to address something I in my Late, in the latest video? Yeah, the latest one. Um, Film Analysis, The Shining, and Twin Peaks, the number 42, 42 Red Rum, and H.G. Wells. I talk about how I believe that Red Rum really means Red Room, and that the Red Room 
in, at least in The Shining, is the Colorado Lounge, because the word Colorado means red, and Colorado ra- Lounge almost almost perfectly translates from English uh, Colorado Lounge into Spanish, uh, you know, basically bread room in Spanish. Um, and I equate that to the red room in Twin Peaks, um, where, you know, where it, Agent, Agent Cooper goes to like get all these weird clues and whatever. Um, and, <clears throat> and I, I have yet to find anybody else who has equated, uh, red rum, also known as red room, in my opinion, to the Colorado lounge. But I have found a couple of articles. Oh, no, not that. Um, this, oh, this, isn't this awesome, by the way, this photo here? This is from a website called Welcome to Twin Peaks. Um, fanning the fire, one blog at a time, and there's always David Lynch in the air. This is the website. It says, The Shining Meets Twin Peaks in the Red Room 237. Okay, so this individual who, who put together this article, which I will read to you, it's not very long, is it? Um, they think that the red room is room 237, not the Colorado Lounge like I do. So the reason I'm showing you this is because, to me, it makes me feel better about my theory. It To me, it, it shows me that I'm not the only person thinking in that direction. I don't agree with this person. I don't agree that that, that the red room um, in Twin Peaks equates the room, room 237 in The Shining, but I like I like the way this person thinks, right? Um, to me, room two thirty seven in The Shining, if anything, it, it equates to, you know, the brothel uh, where Laura Palmer works in um, Twin Peaks, because the room two thirty seven is a very like hypersexualized kind of room. It, there's there's too much going on there. The carpet in there, oh good God, no. Um, it's like I told you, right? Room 237 is frightening. It looks like all kinds of shit has happened in there. Um, and it needs to be like thoroughly and deeply disinfected. That's just how I feel, right? And I found another article. Again, they, they, they put together the carpeting, um, from the hallways around room 237 and then the flooring in the red room in the at Twin Peaks. Right, so I'll read both of these pretty quickly. And I also found a post on uh, Reddit where somebody equates red room to red rum, but it's not what we're talking about. It's a completely different issue. So let me let me get started. And I've got a cup. I found a couple of more vents uh, in the shining that I missed. I did that whole video about hot air and, you know, uh, the, the forced air heater vents and I totally missed one. So I'll, I'll, I'll add that one on for you. I don't know which one to do first. Jesus. Um, let me, let me go through this first. This one, the welcome to twin peaks website says the shining meets twin peaks in the red room 237. Uh, Purgatory, a Twin Peaks and the Shining mashup by Jared Lyon, in which the Red Room and Room 237 meet. Um, and again, this is an awesome picture, really awesome picture. And this is also interesting. Yeah, the Danny, you know, the man, the arm from The Shining, he's very short. He's probably about Danny's height. This is interesting. Maybe they're, they're equivalents of each other. Maybe, um, you know, this, this character, this, this one in the red suit, uh, that you find in the red room in Twin Peaks, maybe he was inspired by Danny. I don't know. I really don't know. But we shall see. Well, we're gonna have to think about it. Um, it says here, okay, let me just read it th- right, right, right on through. It says here, uh, name two iconic floor patterns. Chances are high you'll mention both the zigzag floor in the Black Lodge from Twin Peaks and the grid-based carpet as seen in Stanley Kubrick's The Shining. Interesting. Uh, Jared Lyon, former 
organizer of the Twin Peaks Fest, spent hours in Photoshop to create this perfect mashup called Purgatory, in which the Red Room and Room 237 meet. And I did say in my, um, well, I think it was the Colorado Lounge Red Room video, that there, it seems like the Red Room in Twin Peaks and the Colorado Lounge um, do form some kind of like the idea of purgatory or limbo or some kind of in-between place. I'm starting to think that it isn't that much purgatory or limbo or anything like that. But I, I can't quite put my finger yet on what I think it could be. So going to have to think about that one. Uh, it says, one day I was struck by how the iconic floor patterns from Twin Peaks and The Shining could be matched up, and how they both can be viewed as representing a sort of purgatory. So a bunch of hours in Photoshop, and voila. Originally, I made the graphic with out the characters, but in the end decided to add them in. You can almost hear the man from another place say, Red Ram. There we go. I think it's pretty awesome. Uh, he, he at this point, this person was considering doing poster prints. Okay, uh, and if this is an actual quote from Twin Peaks, oh Lord, all work and no play make Ben and Jerry dull boys. Oh boy, and I think I read somewhere that Ben and Jerry uh, were named after like the the ice cream Ben and Jerry's which I haven't had in a long time. Too much sugar. Um, that, I mean, no, 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 no offense to Ben and Jerry's, but their ice creams are a little intense, like way too much going on. But y'all tell me how you feel about this article. Like I say, when I see this, it makes me feel less crazy. It makes me feel like I'm less of a lunatic. When <laughs> I see that, you know, people are making the connections between Twin Peaks and, and The Shining, not just me. Let me move on to this other article, uh, Red Rum and the Red Room, uh, and I'll just go ahead and read it. This is from a website called werewolves.com. So here we go. It says, there's no date. Okay. It says, uh, okay. This past week, and I caught Stanley Kubrick's The Shining at the theater for the first time. The fact that I refer to it as Kubrick's and not Stephen King's is likely why Stephen King doesn't care for the film. <laughs> you're right. Whoever wrote this, you're right. <laughs> the movie is probably even more Stanley Kubrick's creation than it is Stephen King's. So much of the movie came not from the novel, but from the film director and co-writer Kubrick. Novelist Diane Johnson, not Stephen King, wrote the screenplay for the film along with Kubrick. The actors and their performances, the music and the cinematography and the visuals. Something that struck me watching the film is the similarity in the patterns of the rug in the Overlook Hotel in the movie and the infamous Red Room, a part of the even more infamous Black Lodge from Twin Peaks. Check them out in the image accompanying this article. The maze-like pattern of the carpeting from The Shining, nothing is accidental with Kubrick, so I feel the same way. Um, anyway, the maze-like pattern of the carpeting from The Shining is on the left. The pattern for the Red Room is on the right. Did Lynch take inspiration from The Shining when he came up with the Red Room? I believe he did. Uh, nothing is accidental with David Lynch. No, it ain't. Uh, really, the two aren't that similar, yet there's something that reminds you when looking at one of the other. A quick Google search reveals that I'm not the first person to have noticed this. Okay, cool. And you can see there's like, what, one? No, this isn't a comment. This is a bio of the, of the author of this. And I totally agree. Like, I believe there are many similarities between Twin Peaks and The Shining. And I also believe that there are many similarities between Eraserhead and um, The Shining, and probably more of Kubrick's movies, like FMJ and Eyes Wide Shut are probably inspired or influenced 
by David Lynch and specifically Eraserhead um, much more than we've ever thought, right? So that's what I'm going to kind of be working on uh, as we go along. And they compare the c c patterns because they're infamous uh, car carpet or flooring patterns in very, very famous TV shows and movies, right? And then there's the picture here, right? Now, I will just do a quick, I'll just make a quick comment to let you know where I'm at right now with regard to the floor in um, the Red Room in the in Twin Peaks, okay? I, I, I still don't know what to think of this carpet in The Shining. I really don't. Um... But, you know, it, when it comes to me, it'll come to me. But the flooring in the Red Room in uh, Twin Peaks. Remember when I said in, I don't know which video it was, was it this one or the one where I talk about the opening credits of the show Twin Peaks, this one with the picture of Laura Palmer as the thumbnail? Um... I, do, I didn't talk about the, the flooring pattern in the Red Room, as you can see here, but I did talk about the military-industrial complex, and I said that I believe, in my opinion, David Lynch is making a very, very strong comment about the military-industrial complex and how it's a source of misery. A source... It, that, it, it's more or less evil. Okay? The people who run it, the people who fund it, the people who everything... They, um, they, they enrich themselves by capitalizing on human suffering. And that's what I think that is going on with Twin Peaks, the show. I think that's what David Lynch's message is. And I think that he is also kind of like Stanley showing us that this didn't start in the 20th century. This, I mean, he's going to show us a lot of 20th century references in Twin Peaks with regard to the military industrial complex and all of the armed, com armed conflicts that have taken place all over the world in the 20th century, uh, especially mechanized warfare right? He's going to show us plenty of examples of that. But he's also, like Stanley Kubrick, going back to mythology. And he's showing us, yeah, this didn't start in the 20th century or the 19th century. No, this goes back to day one, kind of like what Stanley's doing in The Shining. I think they have a similar goal as, as creators and as artists in what they um, want to say. Now, all that being said, the flooring in the red room. It's here, you see it, and you see it here too, right? Um, this, I've read this in the, like, the Twin Peaks fandom, uh, and maybe even the Wikipedia pages too, I'm not sure, but I've heard of this flooring pattern in the red room in Twin Peaks described as a chevron pattern. And like I said, I think in one of the videos I said everywhere else that I've encountered this pattern, it's called a herringbone pattern. But for some reason, for Twin Peaks, I don't know the people who do, you know, write-ups of these shows or these fandom pages or whatever, for some reason, and I've seen this in more than one source, they call it a chevron pattern on in the Red Room rather than... um my herringbone pattern. And so, of course, I went to look up Chevron. And, of course, I found the website for the gasoline company. Yeah, Chevron. I think they still pretty much exist. Uh, I'm not sure, though. And then I said, okay, yeah, I, I knew this had to do with oil. And, you know, oil is, uh, petroleum uh, is a big ingredient, a, bi a very large measure of, of an ingredient in the military-industrial complex, in the war machine, in the death machine that's been plaguing this planet and all the people and creatures that live on it since day one. Oil has been, you know, ever since its discovery, it's made war even more vicious and even more deadly. Okay, so that might be the connection, like Chevron and gasoline, but I think that David, our David, um, took it a step further. Because when you really look up the word Chevron and you get past the gasoline company, um, you get to what a Chevron really is. And a Chevron is an inverted, uh, not inverted, but it's like um, 
I, I don't want to look up the term now because I have other stuff that I want to talk about. But a chevron is like just an angle. It looks like an angle. And where do you find chevrons? Like on, like on the chevron logo. You find them, it's military insignia. It, you'll find it on the arms of like a, a military person's jacket that they wear. And that tells you what rank that person is like what rank that officer is how high up they are as far as the hierarchy in the military that's what a chevron is used for a chevron symbol or or shape is used for okay um yeah yeah david is not kidding david lynch is not playing games he has something very serious to say, and I believe he's been saying it in uh, most of his movies and most of his, like, again, artistic products throughout the course of his life. Uh, it's just that we need to pay a little more, more closer attention. We, we need to look more closely, think about it a little more. It's there. It is freaking there. So here... Again, and like I said, these curtains, where is it? These curtains in the red room, for some freaking reason, they remind me very, very strongly of the torrents of blood coming out of the elevator in The Shining. I'm just saying, and these curtains are everywhere. And I'm going to do this. I'm going to tackle this as I as I get to um, Twin Peaks and, and go through. Um, each episode and what have you and, and tell you about what I find and, and what, and, and I'm not going to do frame by frame. Oh, good heavens. No, but, um, I'm going to, when I see something significant, I'll let you know. Now this last one, uh, red room equals red rum. Uh, somebody posted this. I'll, I'll link to this in the description. I'll link to all this stuff in the description. Somebody said it's called red room for a reason i believe it is a foreshadowing and i assume it is an allusion to the shining uh ha, 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 ha. but now this is not about it's allusion to the shine but what they're talking about here is the haunting of hill house okay and i and this is not like the original movie um with julie harris is it julie harris I think it's Julie Harris or like Russ Tamblin is in that movie too. Russ Tamblin is also in Twin P Twin Peaks. So that's interesting. But that the when I say original movie I mean the one from 1963. They're talking about some new thing. And there's a red room, I guess, in Hill House in this version of it and these people, you know, in in the the fan club, I guess here on Reddit for this Haunting of Hill House thing. I don't know if it's a movie or a show whatever but they're equating red room to red rum again this makes me feel a little bit less insane like if these people are seeing it too that means i'm not that far off anyway what did i what was i saying um okay i i got all of that out the way right um i want to show you this i found a couple more events and tankard also found a couple too so um let me show you where where shall we begin okay let me just show you the first one yeah i missed this one oh no let me let me let me try that again hold on um yeah so here is the scene with wendy and the doctor woman this is before she lights her cigarette all right um and you can see just a little bit of it down here. There's a vent <laughs> in the, I guess I'll just call this the dining area of their apartment in Boulder, Colorado. You could barely see it here, right? And you can see it better here when they're just walking into the living room, uh, when they, when they leave Danny's bedroom. Like, Tankard, I'll, I uh, just just a second just a second so you see this all right you see this vent in the kitchen dining area okay the, the and if you remember my video about the forest air heating vents you know how I feel I believe that the presence of vents tells us that whatever we're seeing in that scene is hot air is full of hot air 
also known as bullshit, also known as lies, also known as a hallucination and whatever. And here it is in the scene where Danny, uh, not Danny, no, where Wendy talks to the doctor woman. And you might ask, you might say, well, wait a minute now. Hold on. Um, if it's there now, then it was also there when Wendy and Danny were having their peanut butter and jelly sandwiches when they were sitting at this table. Au contraire. Yes, it was there, I guess, but Stanley didn't include it in any of the shots. He focused on Danny sitting here and Wendy sitting here. All right. So he, it's if it was there, he didn't want us to see it in those shots. That's why I don't believe he, he let the camera even get anywhere near this in the peanut butter and jelly scene. Later with the doctor woman. Oh, look, there it is. Um, so this kind of snaps together with another kind of uh, part of the movie that I analyzed earlier on, or I scrutinized earlier on in my understanding the shining series where I do a whole thing about like the doctor woman having uh, the talk with Wendy after examining Danny. Um, and I say, what if, what if that whole conversation between Wendy and the doctor woman is just Wendy hallucinating? And like none of that happened. She never had that conversation with the doctor woman. She never told Jack, um, uh, she never told the doctor woman that Jack dislocated Danny's shoulder. She never told Jack, uh, again, not Jack. She never told the doctor woman that Jack was basically an alcoholic and whatever. That, that was all just inside of Wendy's head. Um, and now I feel even more strongly that that in fact is the case regarding this movie because of the presence of this vent. Let me show you the other. Um, yeah, there they are about to sit down. A tankard. I'll just address it right here. You feel that there's a floor radiator, um, under, like, right, right up against the, the wall here. I don't think so because personally, I don't know. For some reason, I don't see it. Um, I, th and I, th I believe that Stanley would have made it more obvious if there was a radiator. Like, I don't think he would have put a floor radiator. I think he would have put a radiator radiator if he wanted us to notice a radiator, just like the radiator in Henry Spencer's, um, bedroom in Eraserhead. It would be unmistakable. You wouldn't have to wonder whether or not you just saw a radiator. No, it would be like up to the window here. That's my opinion. Um, also, also notice something. Yeah, like, and, and you circle this. These are tankard screenshots, by the way, of this scene. Um, I think that's the leg of the chair or like the crossbar of the leg of the chair. But also notice this one thing I just, just noticed. Jesus. All these chairs are very nicely, nicely pushed in, um, around the dinner table. Okay. Nicely pushed in. But when Wendy and the doctor woman, like actually get down to talking, this chair, the, the chairs are no longer nicely pushed in. Like, what the hell? What the actual hell is this? How? How? Look at this. See? Nice, nicely pushed in. All right. Nice and neat and everything. And, and the tablecloth is also kind of nice and neat. No, it's not the right size for this table, but at least she made an effort or whatever to make it nice and even, like all di all the same length of distribution everywhere around the table, okay? But in these other shots, look, nice and neat chairs, nice and neat tablecloth, but in this shot where she's talking about her husband, it looks a little disheveled, okay? It looks a little messy, the tablecloth. And the chairs are definitely pulled out, seemingly on all sides. <sighs> Shit. Just like those chairs in the gold room, like I said, before Susie walks in with Danny in the gold room, the chairs are, like, nice and neat and even. 
And then after Susie walks in with Danny, the chairs are like a mess at the bar in the gold room. What's up with these chairs? Also, another thing that Tancred and me were talking about is this freaking oven behind Wendy. Why are these knobs, the controls of the oven, why are they close to the floor? That don't make no sense. I've never in my life seen an oven like that. This makes absolutely no sense with regard. I mean, why would you, like, like Tanker was saying, why would you want to like bend all the way down to, to switch the oven on and off? Don't make no sense at all, at all in any way, shape or form whatsoever. No, just no, absolutely not. Um, also, what else do I, what else am I noticing now in hindsight that I, that I, um, didn't or couldn't notice before well dang it um check out the ladles <laughs> or at least one of these is a ladle they're kitchen utensils and they're hanging off the wall above the the um cooktop in the kitchen and look at this freaking look at this ladles right next to her head she's the bear ursa major ursa minor Big Dipper, Little Dipper, whatever. Ursa. The Dipper part is not important. It's the Ursa part. Bear. She's the bear. Okay? Winnie. Winifred is Winnie. The bear. Winnie the Pooh. W Wendy the bear. Whenever you see a bear, that's where I'm at right now in The Shining. It's a representation of Wendy's presence in some way, shape, or form or another. Maybe it's, it's not a representation. Like, she's not there there. But maybe she's like close to there. Maybe she's listening in. Maybe she's spying. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know. And again, here it is. Right? The vents. The vents. All those damn books. I mean, there's a lot of books in this room. Did they take them all with them to the Overlook? I don't know. I didn't see that many books in their apartment in the Overlook. Are these books a fig Newton of her imagination? They got a sconce in this apartment in um you know the the where they live before they moved to the overlook, and it doesn't resemble the sconce at the overlook hotel, but it is sconce, and it seems empty. There's no candle. There's no, if there's a light bulb in there, it's very hard to see. Also, check out this window in the dining area. What the hell is this thing on the windowsill? There's a stack of books, and then there's this thing next to it that very closely resembles like that weird, uh, you know, tree branchy looking sculpture that you see. I forget where, but I know it's there in the Overlook Hotel. And it also is very reminiscent of eagle's wings, but also that wooden, like, branch sculpture. I don't know. I don't know. And then finally, they're sitting down. Ugh. A mess. A freaking mess. This, this movie. Just, there's, you could watch this a thousand times. And still find something new that you didn't notice before on the thousand and first um, viewing. I really do believe that. No doubt, no question in my mind that Stanley was going the extra mile to make an effort to not confuse us, no, but to teach us something. And... The only way to, if you're really going to do this, with it, whether it's with Stanley Kubrick films or David Lynch films, the only way you're really going to do this, the only way you're really going to learn something is if you have to struggle with the material and if you have to think really hard and you have to combine things and compare and contrast and question your own sanity, really. Because every time I do one of these videos, I say what I have to say. I say what I think. I, I tell you what I notice and, and what I think of the things that I notice. But every also every step of the way, I'm questioning my own sanity. I, I'm, you know, may, I, and no, nothing, you all are very nice. And you say, no, maybe 
you know, no, 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 Miss Sam, you're not crazy. Thank you. But I still feel like there might be a possibility that I'm not okay in the head. And um, I can't shake that feeling that, like, maybe I am crazy. Or even if I am crazy, that still doesn't mean I'm wrong or totally wrong. I don't know. But, like, I do, I do question my sanity every step of the way. You know, have am am I obsessive, compulsive? Um, am I on the spectrum? Do I have dyslexia, or am I just like, you know, I I'm reading too much into stuff. Again, it's not going to stop me because I do feel that even if I'm wrong, I'm not completely wrong. So why not? You know, um, so that's that. I've gone through, like I said, ladles weird oven and tankard pointed this out this is not my observation this is his observation and you know i'm giving him his credit for that ursa bear uh, the vent on the um wall yeah in the um in the torrance apartment in boulder that means that whatever you're about to see in this scene is hot air and I, you know, again, he could have shot lower. He didn't. He, he, I mean, these people know how to work with cameras. He didn't have to show us the ceiling. He didn't have to show us above, like, you know, their heads. He didn't. He could have cut this. He could have cut this. He could have aimed, pointed his camera somewhere else. But no, he wanted us specifically to see this vent in the kitchen that I, for the life of me, didn't notice before, and because I wasn't thinking in that direction before. So there's that. Yeah, I wanted to, like I said, tie up loose ends. Um, so upcoming, I'm going to be doing Understanding the Shining Part 17. Going to get going with Twin Peaks. I think I'm going to have to just, like, buy it on Amazon Prime and watch it to make sure I'm watching it, um, watching the show Twin Peaks in the right order. Because, yeah, I found a little bootleg website, but I don't know if it's right. I don't know if it's accurately labeled. Nothing. Um, FMJ, hopefully, um, more, um, you know, just more stuff, right? And I want to do like that, uh, like a podcast. I was going to do, I wanted to call it an artist today. And I said, can I really do every day? So let me just do a podcast called An Artist. And I'm going to cover a new artist, a different artist, each and every time. If you have any suggestions, put them in the comments. Uh, I I might just do them. You never know. So is there anything else that I wanted to talk about in this video? Did I miss anything? Like I said, I'm exhausted like you wouldn't believe. Um, just tired up the wazoo. Oh. <sighs> Got a lot of pots cooking on the stove, on my own stove. And I don't mean that literally. I mean it figuratively. And I'll let you know how things turn out. If they turn out good, I'll tell you. If they turn out bad, I'll tell you. Don't worry. You'll know. Um, <laughs> and that's that. So I don't think my voice or my um, like head is in the right space to read the red room tonight, but I did want to do this little odds and ends video um, addressing red rum, red room, and the other people who have at least visually made that connection, and I wanted to um, talk about the vents <laughs> that I missed in um, The Shining, because I think they're important. I think you should know about them. They tell us more about what we're really seeing in that movie. So... That's it for now. Um, if, you know, if you have anything you'd like to contribute or add or any suggestions for me or, or whatever, please feel free to drop it in the comments. You know, join me on Reddit. Yeah, we'll figure something out. We'll create a nice discussion space where we can all um, enjoy exchanging ideas about this movie. The comments section of my videos is great. But it's not like, you know, comment section of the videos isn't meant for like um, an extended conversation about one or more subjects. So maybe we can use Reddit for that. We shall see. Um, other than that, I think I'm done with this video. Uh, again, I'll be back with more. I promise I'll be back with more. And until 
next time. Probably I'll read you The Red Room next time, or do an episode of Twin Peaks. And until next time, when I, I until I find yet another reason. Hold on, wait a minute. I forgot to do my church announcements. Like I said, very, very tired. Um, returning viewers. Thank you for returning new viewers. Thank you for being new subscribers. Thank you for subscribing. And all of you wonderful people, no matter why you're here, uh, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share my videos. Uh, spread the word. Let people know about this. Uh, you know, if you want them to have a good laugh, send them on over here. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll get alerted when I drop a new video. And that's that. Now I will do my sign-off. Um, until next time, until the next time I find yet another reason to talk at you, I'm going to go ahead and bid you bye-bye. <laughs> so, bye-bye, everybody.